Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's continue with your uh, with our discussion about covering spaces. Um, so you know, we let me recall uh, in the in the last lecture uh, uh, we looked at uh, 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 why uh, the fiber over a point of the base space of uh, the universal covering uh, can be identified with the fundamental group uh, base at that point. Okay, so we got a picture like this. So, so if x, if x sub u n i v is the universal cover for uh, the topological space x, okay, um, then I told you that uh, given a point uh, small x uh, in capital X, then the fiber uh, P inverse of x, namely the set of all points which are mapped to x under p uh, is uh, canonically uh, which means uh, naturally bijective to the fundamental group of capital X based at small x okay. So um, in fact uh, uh, we had a statement for a general cover a general covering from which this followed okay uh, namely if you had a general covering space. Uh, a covering map if x tilde to x is a general covering map then uh, you take a point uh, small x in capital X uh, then the fiber P inverse of x I said was uh, it can be canonically uh, uh, identified with the coset space being the fundamental group of uh, the space below at the base at the point below mod the uh, image of the fundamental group above uh, where uh, x tilde was a point that went to x okay. So, uh, so each fiber each fiber looked like this coset space and uh, p lower star uh, was the group homomorphism from the fundamental group above to the fundamental group below fixing a base point above which goes to a base point below and uh, p lower star was an injective homomorphism therefore p lower star of uh, the fundamental group above was a subgroup of the fundamental group below and this coset space uh, turned out to be uh, canonically uh, that is naturally identifiable with the fiber okay and as a special case when uh, x tilde is the universal covering then you know that the uh, for a universal covering the the uh, the covering space uh, is simply connected so the fundamental group is trivial and uh, therefore uh, this term goes away uh, this becomes just the identity subgroup and you get this okay so we got a picture like this we got a picture uh, uh, we got a picture in this form so this was x and uh, this x tilde on uh, this x uh, now in this case x the universal cover over x was a space which was gotten by you know for every point x I put a copy I put a copy of the fundamental group based at small x. So you take some other point x prime then I get uh, the, the inverse image is the fundamental group uh, at x prime okay. So in this way the, uh, the, the universal covering space is uh, just uh, uh, all these fundamental groups put together okay as at least as a set okay and uh, in other words we say that uh, uh, this mapping is a vibration with fiber uh, isomorphic to the fundamental group below and when I say fundamental group below I 
I, I do not I do not worry about the base point because uh, x is an arcwise connected space and uh, the fundamental groups at two different points are isomorphic okay. So, um, now uh, so this explains um, uh, why uh, the fiber looks like the fundamental group okay below in in for a covering for a covering map that involves universal covering okay. Now we need to also uh, look at another question uh, the other question is the following. So let me recall um, uh, so let me draw a line here so let me recall uh, again that, that you know we looked at these basic examples started with the non-zero complex number and uh, uh, looked at the map from C to C mod uh, the group of integer translations by this non-zero complex number and uh, this map uh, gave uh, uh, this map was into a quotient and this quotient um, inherited a uh, Riemann surface structure and so this was the Riemann surface structure C sub omega uh, Riemann surface structure on uh, on the cylinder. So this is Riemann surface structure on the cylinder which is just uh, which is uh, which is homeomorphic to uh, S1 the circle cross R okay and uh, what we noted was that the the first fundamental group of the of the cylinder uh, okay uh, and mind you the first fundamental group has got nothing to do with the Riemann surface structure it is just defined topologically. Uh, this first fundamental group uh, is isomorphic to uh, this uh, group of translations by integer multiples of omega which is a subgroup of uh, automorphisms holomorphic automorphisms of the covering space which is C okay. This is a covering map this is the universal covering because C is simply connected and the fundamental group of the base uh, is is isomorphic to a subgroup of uh, holomorphic auto automorphisms above okay and similarly uh, we had a similar situation for the torus. Uh, so in the case of the torus complex torus we fix two uh, complex numbers and uh, of course assume that they are linearly independent over R so the ratio is not real okay and we took the uh, the following map namely uh, going modulo the integer uh, the translation by integer multiples of uh, these two complex numbers okay and uh, this turned out to be uh, uh, a Riemann surface structure uh, on the complex uh, on the on the torus uh, on the topological torus on the topological torus which is uh, which I just call it as T which is homeomorphic to uh, S1 cross S1 okay and uh, of course this map is say pi sub omega 1 comma omega 2. Um, this also is a an example of a universal covering map um, and uh, again in this case we find that the fundamental group of the uh, of the topological space below. Uh, is uh, is isomorphic to the uh, this group which is uh, just uh, a subgroup of the holomorphic automorphisms of the universal curve okay. So, um, so the question is uh, the the, fu the fundamental group of the base space in both cases can be identified as a subgroup of the automorphisms of the cover of the co of the universal covering space okay. So why does this happen we need to understand this okay. So that is what we are trying to uh, uh, now understand and uh, uh, the way the way to do that uh, or at least one way to do that is first um, to tell you how 
uh, one can construct the universal covering space okay. So, um, uh, of course, so this argument will also help us to construct the universal covering space and uh, eventually it will also explain why the fundamental group of the base space uh, can be nicely identified as uh, the uh, automorphisms a subgroup of automorphisms of the uh, universal covering space okay. So, um, so if you um, uh, so, so let us start so, so construct let us give you the construction of the uh, universal covering space okay. So, as I have always told uh, um, we are all we are assuming all our topological spaces to be uh, so in particular x for example we are assuming that the topological space uh, the topological spaces are all uh, housed off uh, aqueous connected uh, locally aqueous connected and locally simply connected okay. Uh, so that is a blanket assumption. So, what is one going to do? Um, so, this is how we uh, this is how we construct the, the universal covering space. Um, so, let me draw a diagram. Um, so, it is very clear that uh, so, so if this is x, so I want this x uh, the universal covering. If you give me the point small x, what I need on top is uh, a copy of the fundamental group at of x based at x at least if you look at this situation okay. So, basically we want uh, the at least as a set we want the universal cover uh, uh, to satisfy this uh, diagram uh, namely over each point you have a copy of the fundamental group below based at that point below okay. So, it is very clear uh, that over x I will have to put the fundamental group at x, but then uh, if you take another point let me say x prime what is it that we are going to put on top okay. So, the the answer to that is the following uh, what one does is that uh, one takes paths one takes paths alpha from uh, x to x prime such paths always do exist because x is arcwise connected okay. So, I can take a path like this and um, uh, I can uh, take the homotopy class classes uh, class of this path and put all those paths on top so this is what is going to go to uh, x prime and uh, and you see uh, if x prime is equal to x what am I going to do I am going to just put going to put homotopy classes of paths starting at x at end and ending at x and therefore I am going to get the fundamental group okay. So, uh, so there is a nice simple definition of uh, uh, the universal covering space at least to begin with as a set it is uh, going to be just the set of all uh, um, uh, paths starting at x. Uh, you, st you you have path starting at x, and then you go modulo uh, homotopy, fixed endpoint homotopy. Okay. So, uh, so you know if uh, uh, if alpha uh, and alpha prime are two paths such that you know alpha can be deformed continuously to alpha prime then uh, they will give rise to the same point uh, above in the fiber over x prime and of course you know what x prime is x prime is just uh, uh, alpha of uh, 1 it will also be alpha prime of 1 it is the terminal point of alpha and alpha prime. And of course a beta which is not uh, homotopic to alpha uh, is going to give you a different point above okay. And uh, so, you can see um, uh, that when x prime is x I am going to simply get the fundamental group copy of the fundamental group above x okay. So, um, and what is going to be what is this map going to be. So, I have to define this covering map uh, something that I should verify that finally will turn out to be a covering map okay and the map is just a very natural map uh, from uh, 
this set to this topological space and this map is simply you give me a path alpha and I just send it to the end point of uh, uh, the, the path alpha okay. So, uh, so that corresponds to this diagram here okay. So, um, uh, a, a point above uh, lying over a point below is just homotopy class of a path from x to that point below okay fixed end point homotopy class right. Um, so, this is my uh, uh, starting point uh, now one to begin with first of all um, uh, if you go back to this diagram uh, you see that if I took uh, any other point x prime what I would get in the fiber p inverse of uh, x prime was something that naturally looked like the fundamental group based at x prime okay. So, we need to check uh, whether that is going to happen there see it is already happening for x because that is the way we started it but it does not look that way uh, from the definition but one needs to do a little bit of work. So, let us uh, uh, so let me write this down uh, see p inverse of x is certainly the fundamental group of x based at x small x there is no doubt about it okay because this is going to be path starting at x uh, uh, um, and also ending at x because uh, because of this definition okay. So, these are going to be loops at x modulo uh, fixed end point homotopy so it is going to give me just the fundamental group. Now what about a point like x prime what is p inverse of x prime why should this look like the fundamental group uh, uh, based at x prime okay well for that let us uh, 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 so why is this going to look like the fundamental group of capital X based at x prime. So to understand this let me fix uh, let me fix or choose uh, you know uh, an alpha uh, in this um, let me choose a uh, point alpha here all right. So, this is in p inverse of x prime what does it mean it means that the end point of alpha is uh, x prime right and what I am going to do I am going to define a map uh, so define uh, from p inverse of x to the fundamental group at x prime okay. So, this is how I am going to uh, show that uh, the uh, the, fi the fiber over x prime looks like the looks like a copy of the fundamental group over x prime what I am going to do is see um, give me any beta uh, and give me any beta here I am just going to send it to um, let me look at my uh, um, notes here so that I do not mess up the notation um, yes. So, I will define a map L sub alpha okay and this L sub alpha is just beta going to uh, I think beta beta inverse alpha okay. So, you see uh, try to understand this uh, I have fixed this alpha and uh, given any beta okay I am going to take beta inverse alpha that means I am going to go like this and then I am going to go back by alpha that is going to give me a loop at x prime and therefore its homotopy class is going to give me an element of the fundamental group based at x prime. Now the claim is that this is a bijective map okay the claim is that this is a bijective map and therefore every fiber has been identified with the fundamental group based uh, uh, at the point below provided you just choose one the, the identification was based on choosing a point on the fiber okay. So, why is this uh, why is this map uh, uh, injective and surjective we can see that very easily L alpha is uh, is, uh, uh, <coughs> is surjective because um, let me again draw another diagram here <coughs> so I have uh, so I have x prime. Uh, so here is x this is the path alpha that I have chosen that I have fixed <coughs> the homotopy class of alpha has been fixed and uh, um, you know I have to show that this is uh, every uh, this is the image of this map. So, if I start with an element here which is a loop base at x prime okay if gamma if, if omega 
is a loop based at x prime. So, you know my omega is going to look like this <coughs> omega is a loop based at x prime ok and uh, well uh, you know I have to find a beta such that beta inverse alpha is omega ok uh, and that is that is uh, so you know if you if you work it out you can see that I will have to just take uh, uh, so beta inverse alpha is omega uh, what I need is uh, a path I, I need a, an element over uh, the fiber of x prime <coughs> which means by definition a path from x to x prime ok and what is that path from x to x prime I am going to just take um, uh, alpha followed by uh, omega inverse. So uh, alpha followed by omega inverse let us try this. So, so alpha is a path from x to x prime and omega inverse is also a path from x to x, x prime to x prime. So, if I compose them if I concatenate them I will certainly get a path from x to x prime ok and where does this go to this goes to by definition it goes to by this map it goes to omega inverse uh, it goes to alpha omega inverse whole inverse times alpha homotopy class of this and uh, if you write this down alpha omega inverse whole inverse is omega inverse the whole inverse alpha inverse and uh, that is uh, so this is going to be just omega inverse whole inverse alpha inverse alpha and you can see that this is just going to be omega ok because alpha inverse alpha is going to uh, be the uh, 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 alpha inverse followed by alpha is going to be homotopic to the constant path at x prime and uh, omega followed by omega inverse whole inverse is just omega omega follow concatenated with the constant path x prime is just going to be omega all right because the constant path at x prime is the uh, you know it is the unit element in the fundamental group there uh, based at x prime so uh, so therefore it's surjective okay then i need to tell you that uh, this is also injective l sub alpha is injective for if so uh, let us assume that uh, 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 L sub alpha of beta 1 is equal to L sub alpha of beta 2 suppose I assume this ok. So again I have a diagram like this so let me draw another diagram here. Um, so I have uh, so I have two points uh, above um, so this is uh, uh, so let me draw a line here so this is above this is in x tilde I have two points beta 1 and beta 2 and uh, these two points are lying over the point x prime and uh, what do e what do each one of them correspond to they correspond to homotopic uh, the homotopy class of a path from x to x prime namely so this is the path uh, say this is the path beta 1 this is the path beta 2 ok <coughs> and uh, I have assumed that uh, L sub alpha beta 1 is L sub alpha beta 2. So this by definition means that beta 1 inverse alpha uh, is equal to beta 2 inverse alpha ok which means which tells you that beta 1 inverse alpha is homotopic to beta 2 inverse alpha and then uh, you can uh, uh, operate on the right by alpha inverse ok and that will tell you <coughs> that uh, beta inverse is homotopic uh, beta 1 inverse is homotopic to beta 2 inverse and that will tell you that beta 1 is homotopic to beta 2. So what this all this will tell you is that it will just tell you that beta 1 is equal to beta 2 ok. So uh, uh, therefore it happens that um, uh, the uh, the map L alpha is uh, certainly a bijective map and, and uh, in a sense we, uh, we are still in the same situation uh, uh, like this the only thing is that the fiber over x prime does not directly look like uh, the fundamental group based at x prime you will have to uh, uh, it looks like that provided you fix a path from x to x prime and now uh, philosophically you can uh, you can uh, uh, now see why this should be should happen is because you see uh, if I if you give me a topological space and give me two points and give me fundamental groups at those points 
the only way of saying that these two are isomorphic is by joining an arc once you join an arc okay then you get an isomorphism of this fundamental group with that fundamental group okay and so otherwise there is no way of connecting these two uh, fundamental groups. So it is uh, necessary to connect x and x prime by a by a path or an arc and that we can do of course because x is uh, path arc wise connected and that is exactly what is happening here all you need is a choice of, uh, of a point here which is actually choosing a an arc alpha from or a path alpha from x to x prime the moment you choose it you are able to identify the fiber with the fundamental group based at x prime okay. So uh, in, in some sense this is at least at least said theoretically uh, uh, it is it is commensurate with this diagram okay, okay. but we need uh, we need to do more things we need to uh, so what do we need to do we need to make this into a topological space uh, uh, so we have to tell you we have to tell what are the open sets here then uh, we have to say that this map is a continuous map okay then we have to say that uh, uh, this topological space uh, satisfies all the conditions that we want of topological spaces to, to satisfy in a, at least in our uh, discussion namely you have to say that this is arc wise connected locally arc wise connected locally simply connected okay then we will have to tell that this is a covering map we will have to prove that this is a covering map then we will also have to say that this space is simply connected once you do all this then this becomes universal covering okay so that is what I am going to do next right so um, so let me begin uh, so uh, uh, let me make the following uh, immediate observation uh, so the first uh, immediate observation is that uh, this map uh, p is certainly surjective because x is capital x is arc wise connected okay so p is surjective as capital x is arc wise connected why because well you give me uh, uh, you so here is x give me any other point x prime then there is certainly an a path alpha which connects x to x prime okay and then then this uh, homotopy equivalence class of this path alpha is an element uh, of uh, the uh, the set uh, x sub univ uh, which uh, is mapped by p to x prime which is uh, which is just uh, x prime is just uh, alpha of 1 the end point of alpha okay. So, um, it is very clear that the map is already surjective um, <coughs> I mean I think you, you should have noted noticed that already okay. Now I need to uh, I know I need to tell you about how to make uh, this into a topological space okay. So, um, so that is again uh, how to make into a topological space. So, it is done in a very obvious way uh, you see uh, so here is uh, here is my uh, this this is my set above which I am trying to turn into a topological space and of course in a way in which this map p, p becomes continuous so this map p is also to be thought of uh, in this process. So I have see so suppose I start with a point uh, let us say uh, alpha okay. So this point is going to lie above the point x prime, which is uh, just alpha of one, where alpha is uh, uh, is a path from x to x prime. Okay, and what would you imagine as a neighborhood of alpha? You would imagine something like this. Okay, and you would expect that to go down to, you know, the covering map. A covering map has to be an open map because it's a local homeomorphism. Okay, so you would expect uh, this to go down to something here. Okay, so um, um, so let me rub off this, rub this off so that uh, let me draw it like this. Okay, and let this be an open set U, uh, which uh, contains alpha of one. All right, and then uh, if this map is continuous. Uh, nearby uh, points should go to nearby points okay so what is a nearby point here it is something that should go to a nearby point here uh, and what is if there is a nearby point here you know uh, what I could do is that um, 
uh, I could join this uh, if I can join this by a path beta okay uh, from uh, alpha of 1 to this point okay then that will give me the point above namely this point is going to be uh, alpha followed by beta okay and by continuity you want nearby points to go to nearby points. So th based on this uh, idea we define an open neighbourhood of alpha in the following way okay. So, so it is exactly uh, as uh, intuitive as you see in the diagram below. So what you do is um, uh, uh, take an open set uh, containing the point alpha um, as I will write it as a pair alpha comma u where u, uh, uh, u where u is an open set in capital X uh, containing uh, uh, alpha of 1 which is uh, uh, which is the point uh, above which alpha is lying and what is this see this should be all paths of that form namely this is all these paths of the form alpha beta where beta is a path from uh, alpha 1 uh, in u okay. So, beta is a path from uh, from alpha 1 in u right. So, uh, so what is happening is that um, uh, so long uh, as I can uh, connect a path in uh, connect a point in u by uh, a path from uh, alpha 1 to that point then I take alpha followed by that path and put it uh, in this set above okay and it is very clear that I am trying to uh, here I am trying to reach uh, all uh, from, from alpha 1 I am trying to reach nearby points okay and therefore uh, the points I get above are going to be uh, points close to alpha okay in a neighborhood of alpha. So this is the intuitive uh, 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 way to define these open sets and once you define these open sets like this um, uh, what happens. So what happens is uh, uh, they do not give you all the open sets but they turn out to be basic open sets namely uh, uh, they form a base for the topology for a topology and what does that mean that means that if you take uh, finite unions of sets like this and then take arbitrary finite intersections of sets like this finite intersections of sets like set like sets like this and then you take arbitrary unions these are going to give you all the open sets and sets of this form are certainly going to cover uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, this 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 whole set okay so uh, so let me write that down sets of the form uh, uh, alpha comma u form a base for a topology on x sub okay so uh, y why do they form a base <coughs> well number one you see if I take uh, uh, the uh, the path to be the constant path at x okay and I take the whole space okay then I will simply get uh, every point in the universal uh, in, 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 in this in this universal set okay okay. So, uh, So if you take something like this then you are going to get everything there and the second thing is that if you take uh, uh, if you have two such sets let us say alpha 1 u 1 and alpha 2 u 2 okay. If you have two such sets and you have a point uh, 
common to this say gamma okay then uh, what happens is that this point gamma is contained it is belongs it belongs to uh, the following set namely it is going to belong to um, uh, so it is just going to belong to gamma u1 intersection u2 which is going to be contained in this intersection. So this is what is going to happen. So what is what is happening is <coughs> uh, 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 so I should put if here if two sets of this form intersect okay then you take any point in the intersection the you can find again a set of this form containing that point which is in the intersection. So this is the property of uh, that says that these sets are basic open sets. So uh, sets form a basic op open set uh, 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 sets uh, sets of certain type are said to form a base for the topology if uh, you know uh, uh, you take two of them or say even finitely many of them and you take a point in the intersection then you should be able to find again a set of the same type in that intersection okay for finite intersections. So I have done it for two int intersections and you can do it for uh, more than two but finite uh, intersections okay. So with these two properties it is easy to check that uh, you can take the topology on x sub uh, u, uh, u unif as the uh, uh, topology given by open sets which are of the form you know uh, arbitrary unions of finite intersections of sets of this type okay. So let me write that down um, I think uh, maybe it is worthwhile to draw a diagram uh, for this one. Um, uh, so you see you have uh, um, so above you have uh, uh, you have two points um, uh, so you have two you have two neighbourhoods of alpha 1 and alpha 2 so here is alpha 1 uh, and then you have a neighbourhood which is uh, which is this this neighbourhood is alpha 1 comma u 1 and then I have uh, another uh, so that is alpha 2 here and this neighbourhood is so this is this is all in x unit so this is uh, uh, alpha 2 u 2 okay and uh, how does it look like below uh, uh, so so this alpha 1 corresponds to a point uh, to a path from x to uh, uh, alpha 1 of 0 alpha 1 of 1 and uh, there is a there is this open set uh, uh, u 1 that I have chosen as a neighbourhood of this point and then so this is alpha 1 and then you have uh, you have another path um, uh, alpha 2 okay and I am going to have um, um, well uh, the end point is going to be alpha 2 of 1 and this going this set is going to be just u2 okay <coughs> and you know uh, saying that there is a point in the intersection would mean that there is going to be some that there is some there is some gamma here so so i should put a square bracket to signify uh homotopy equals class so this is my gamma here all right so um, saying that gamma is in this as well as this is the same as saying that you know gamma is by going by this definition so gamma is also alpha 1 beta 1 okay where beta 1 is a path from alpha of 1 uh, and uh, in in u 1 okay and it is also equal to alpha 2 beta 2 where beta 2 is a path in uh, uh, u 2 starting at alpha 2 of 1 okay and saying that these two are the same uh, that these two equivalence homotopy equivalence classes are the same would tell you that the end points of these paths is the same because it is fixed end point homotopy and that would mean that the end points of these 
have to be in the intersection of u and u2 so the diagram does not really look like this okay so the diagram looks more like uh, more like this so let me write that uh, let me draw one one more diagram um, so the diagram would look like this so you would have uh, the diagram would actually look like this you you the diagram below will actually look like like this you can be the diagram for x uh, you are going to have x you are going to have uh, alpha 1 you are going to have uh, alpha 2 and then you know at the end point of al alpha 1 you are going to have a beta 1 and then you are going to have from the end point of alpha 2 you are going to have a beta 2 and this alpha 1 followed by beta 1 is homotopic to alpha 2 followed by beta 2 which is the which is uh, what you can call as gamma if you want okay. So, uh, so it means that this point is uh, in the intersection of u 1 and u 2 alright. Uh, so, you know uh, uh, this point is in u 1 as well as in u 2. So, this this diagram looks like this rather. So, so there is this common intersection. Uh, so, u 1 and u 2 have to intersect alright and uh, uh, then uh, if u 1 and u 2 intersect then I can consider uh, uh, this uh, set of this form. So, uh, this is a path which starts at x and ends at that point which is the end point of beta 1 and beta 2 uh, which is lying in u 1 intersection u 2 and u 1 intersection u 2 is a non empty open neighborhood of that point. So, you get this uh, uh, a set of this form okay and it is clear that a set of uh, that this is certainly contained in this as well as that okay. So, uh, so this 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 thing that is shaded here uh, maybe it will uh, let me draw a slightly neater diagram. Um, so, you know So, this is alpha 1, this is alpha 2 uh, and say this is beta 1 and this one is beta 2 and this is u 1 intersection u 2 and if you want uh, you can uh, call gamma to be uh, uh, either alpha 1 followed by beta 1 or alpha 2 followed by beta 2 or anything homotopic to that and take the equivalence class okay. So, this is uh, so this is x of course and this is uh, u 1 intersection u 2 okay. So, the moral of the story is that uh, you get a topology on x uh, on this x sub u nif. So, x sub u nif gets a topology by taking open sets to be uh, arbitrary unions. of finite intersections of sets of the form alpha comma okay. So, uh, so that is how you make this into a topological space, um, uh, but the idea is very very similar okay. You want to pick points uh, uh, close to uh, in an open neighborhood of alpha you just do that by picking points close to uh, uh, the end point of alpha uh, namely points in a neighborhood of an end of the end point of alpha okay. Uh, now, so now that you have topologized, topologized this uh, the first thing I need to tell you is that uh, uh, with this topology this map is at least continuous okay. So, uh, 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 the map p from x unit to x uh, alpha going to so it is p of alpha is just alpha of 1 that is our map okay uh, is is continuous and why why is this continuous uh, that is again quite easy to verify uh, as follows. So, uh, 
for I um, will have to just verify that the uh, that is continuous at each point okay. So, what I will do um, um, uh, is I um, will start with the point uh, um, and then I uh, will take its image I will take an open neighbourhood of that point and take the inverse uh, image of that open neighbourhood and show it is open okay. So, in fact uh, uh, what I will have to do is I will have to check that uh, the inverse image inverse images of open sets are open okay. So, what I do uh, uh, so let me do this uh, uh, for if uh, u in x is open uh, and um, say um, alpha is in uh, uh, p inverse of u ok all right. So, then um, the set um, alpha comma u is also going to be in p inverse of u uh, and contains alpha ok. So, uh, so basically what is happening is that you know um, if you take an open set here u and you take an alpha above ok and uh, uh, so what do I have to do is I will have to show that p if u is an open set below I have to show p inverse u is open. So I will have to show that every point of p inverse uh, u is uh, an interior point namely I have to show every point of p inverse u is surrounded by an open set uh, which is contained in p inverse u ok. So, what I do is take a point of p, in, p inverse u uh, so that goes to a point here namely this point is just uh, uh, the end point of alpha and uh, then you know that uh, 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 I have this whole neighbourhood uh, above namely uh, alpha comma u which is an which is an open set uh, 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 each of these are also open sets the basic open sets are also open sets ok because they correspond to uh, so when I say uh, take the open sets to be arbitrary unions of finite intersections. So, the finite intersection could be just one set that is uh, the intersection of a family which contains only one element and the arbitrary union may be just union of a family which contains just one element. So, each of these are also there in uh, in this collection. So, each of these are also open sets and uh, clearly if you take um, a set like this uh, uh, then its image is going to go into u ok that will tell you that this is going to be in p inverse u alright and it contains the point alpha. So, uh, alpha uh, is surrounded by uh, an open set uh, an open neighbourhood inside p inverse u and that is true for every point in p inverse u. So, p inverse u is open. So, we have verified the inverse image of an open set is open. So, therefore, P is continuous ok. So, um, so that makes finally, this into a topological space and this into a continuous map ok. What we next need to do is to verify several properties of this uh, this topological space uh, namely we will have to show that it is um, you know host of you have to show it is uh, uh, arcwise connected uh, you have to show it is uh, locally arcwise connected locally simply connected and then you have to show it is also simply connected you have to show that this map is a, a covering map ok. Um, so, maybe I can I will next go on to try and tell you why this map is uh, uh, I mean why this uh, why this space is uh, is housed off ok which is very very important to begin with. So, um, so I will try to explain that. So, my next claim is uh, um, that this space is housed off ok. So, how do I show that this this housed off well so uh, what is the definition of a space being housed off you give me two distinct points uh, then I can separate them with disjoint open neighbourhoods. So, uh, so here is my so here is my space above uh, uh, x sub 
and uh, I have two points uh, let us say alpha 1 and alpha 2 um, and they will lie ab above their end points um, uh, in x. Uh, so, so here is x the point I have fixed and uh, you know uh, alpha 1 uh, is a path to uh, from x to alpha 1 of 1 which is the image of this point under p and uh, well then I have another point path alpha 2 uh, that will go into alpha 2 of 1 that will end at alpha 2 of 1 and that is the image of this under p ok. And uh, suppose alpha 1 and alpha 2 so there are two cases uh, alpha when alpha 1 and uh, when alpha 1 and alpha 2 have uh, different end points and when they have the same end point. So let us look at both the cases easily uh, so I mean one by one um, uh, case 1 is alpha 1 of 1 is not equal to alpha 2 of 1 ok this is a very very easy case uh, and uh, you see these are two points in x and x is housed off. So there are two open sets uh, two non two open sets which uh, an open set which contains this op an open set which contains that and which do not intersect ok. So since uh, x is housed off there exists u1 u2 open in x with you know uh, alpha 1 of 1 in u1 alpha 2 of 1 is in u2 and uh, 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 u1 intersection u2 uh, being empty okay. So namely the picture is going to look like this so, so I have a, I have a u1 here so this is u1 and I have a u2 here this is u2 then it is very clear that uh, uh, you know uh, if I take this neighbourhood above given by u by alpha 1 comma u1 and this neighbourhood here above by uh, alpha 2 comma u2 that these two uh, uh, that these two neighbourhoods uh, 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 do not intersect ok. So let me write that down so then uh, uh, u1 so alpha 1 comma u1 intersection alpha 2 comma u2 are two open sets above uh, they are open neighbourhoods of alpha uh, homotopy class of alpha 1 and homotopy class of alpha 2 which do not intersect ok. So uh, 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 so I will have to go on to the next case namely when uh, uh, which is slightly more trickier the case when uh, both of these lie over the same point. So alpha 1 of 1 is equal to alpha 2 of 1. So the situation is the diagram is like this what I have is I have uh, two points alpha 1 above and alpha 2 above that lie over the same point uh, below which is alpha 1 of 1 is equal to alpha 2 of 1 ok and so alpha 1 is also a path like this and alpha 2 is also a path like this and x is a starting point ok. So I have this situation. So uh, then the question is what do I do so the question the point is that uh, you see the space x so this is in x tilde this is in x sub u nil ok and uh, both of these points are going to this point which is the end point of alpha 1 as well as of alpha 2 uh, the point uh, the, the, the what we need to use now is the fact that x is uh, you know uh, locally simply connected ok since x is locally simply connected this every point of x has a simply connected neighbourhood ok. So what you do is you choose u to be a simply connected neighbourhood of uh, the point uh, of this end point uh, which is the same end point for alpha 1 and alpha 2 and the claim is that the corresponding sets above with the same u are going to be uh, disjoint ok. Choose since so let me write that down since capital X is locally simply connected. Uh, 
uh, there exists a simply connected neighborhood open set U uh, containing uh, alpha 1 of 1 which is equal to alpha 2 of 1 okay. Then we claim that uh, the open sets alpha 1 comma u <coughs> and alpha 2 comma u their intersection is uh, empty. So these are these are going to be the separating open sets okay and uh, the point is that uh, uh, well um, uh, these are going to be two uh, these are going to be two neighborhoods uh, which are going to map homeomorphically onto you later on we will see that okay. But for the moment uh, uh, the claim is that these two are uh, these two do not intersect and the uh, the proof for that so this is this is alpha 2 this is alpha sub 2 okay. So the proof for that makes use of the fact that you are simply connected namely what you do is that you assume that there is a there is an intersection non trivial intersection so you get a point here and then you get a contradiction uh, to the fact that uh, alpha 1 and uh, uh, alpha 2 are distinct points. So you see I am starting with alpha 1 not equal to alpha 2 that means alpha 1 and alpha, alpha 2 are not homotopic okay. So uh, uh, you can get this contradiction for if uh, gamma is in the intersection alpha 1 u intersection alpha 2 u what happens what does it what happens so the situation is uh, like this um, maybe I can again draw a diagram here so I have uh, so this is all happening in x so I have x here small x so I have uh, I have alpha 1 I have alpha 2 uh, and uh, this is a this is the common end point for alpha 1 and alpha 2 and then you know u is a simply connected neighborhood okay and uh, what have I assumed I must I have, I have assumed that gamma is both in this as well as that. So that means gamma is alpha 1 followed by a path beta 1 in u okay. So there is a path beta 1 in u starting at this end point and going to some point and uh, alpha 1 followed by beta 1 is, is gamma uh, up to homotopy and then similarly uh, the same thing happens here so there is another path beta 2 uh, alpha 2 followed by beta 2 is also gamma up to homotopy all right. Now you see this uh, uh, the fact that this u is simply connected will tell you that any closed path in u can be continuously shrunk to a point okay. So <coughs> what it will tell you is that you know uh, it will tell you therefore that alpha 1 and uh, alpha 2 are homotopic and that means that uh, the homotopy class of alpha 1 will be equal to the homotopy class of alpha 2 but that is not but that is not true okay. So this can be uh, this can be easily seen um, so let me see uh, whether I can uh, write that down easily um, all I have to do is uh, so alpha 1 followed by beta 1 is homotopic to alpha 2 followed by beta 2 uh, so I can write let me write that down <coughs> alpha 1 followed by beta 1 is homotopic to <coughs> alpha 2 followed by beta 2 and this is this homotopic class which we are calling as gamma okay and see now what I can do is that I can operate by beta 1 inverse on the right. So what I will get is I will get alpha 1 beta 1 beta 1 inverse is going to be homotopic to alpha 2 beta 2 beta 1 inverse okay. But you see beta 1 beta 1 inverse okay beta 1 followed by beta 1 inverse so let me call this point as x prime alright uh, then beta 1 beta 1 inverse is going to be homotopic to the constant path at x prime okay. So what I will get on this side this side is going to be just alpha 1 followed by the constant path at x prime and that is the same that is the same as uh, uh, so I should keep writing homotopy uh, so which is the same as alpha 1 okay and what I have on this side 
is uh, uh, alpha 2 followed by what is beta 2 followed by beta 1 inverse. So you see beta 2 followed by beta 1 inverse is a loop at x prime. So it is uh, homotopy to the constant path at x prime because u is simply connected. So what is going to happen is that I am going to get c x uh, here also I am going to get c uh, x prime okay and that is homotopic to alpha 2. So the upshot of the story is that alpha 1 uh, is equal to alpha 2 as homotopy uh, up to homotopy which is a contradiction. So this contradiction tells you that uh, uh, this intersection is indeed empty and therefore the Hausdorffness is proved okay. So um, uh, in, in my next lecture let me try to uh, uh, give you the other properties of this, uh, this, this topological space that make, that make it into a universal covering for X okay so I will stop here.